Giant tuna can in the middle of the desert. Space catapult. Spin launch certainly has its share of colorful nicknames. Their innovative concept of launching spacecraft into orbit using a kinetic energy system sparked significant debate. Some doubted its feasibility, while others held out hope for its success. However, the company has recently faded from the spotlight. What happened? Let's dive in on the real story behind Spin Launch's apparent failure for today's episode of Great SpaceX. Spin Launch offers an ambitious vision, launching objects into orbit without relying heavily on conventional fuel. While it may sound like science fiction, this innovative concept has been the driving force behind the company's efforts since its founding in 2014 by Jonathan Yaney in Sunnyvale, California. Spin Launch aims to revolutionize space access by leveraging kinetic energy to reduce costs and increase the frequency of launches. At its core, Spin Launch's system uses centrifugal force in a vacuum environment to accelerate a projectile to orbital velocities. The process begins with the payload enclosed within a dart-shaped projectile. This projectile is attached to a long carbon fiber tether housed in a centrifuge-like vacuum chamber designed to minimize air resistance. Powered by an electric motor, the system gradually accelerates the projectile to an astonishing speed of about 5,000 miles per hour, which is roughly 8,100 kilometers per hour. Once the target velocity is reached, the projectile is released, traveling through a vertical exit tube and breaching a vacuum-sealed membrane. Using this kinetic energy, the projectile is launched into space, where the payload continues its journey, utilizing a small rocket engine for orbital insertion. Essentially, spin launch acts as a substitute for the traditional first stage booster of a rocket. By spinning and releasing the projectile with immense speed, the company eliminates the need for large amounts of fuel in the initial phase of the launch. In theory, this approach holds considerable promise. Replacing chemical rockets with kinetic energy systems could significantly reduce the cost and complexity of space launches. Traditional launches demand extensive infrastructure, including large launch pads, specialized equipment, and a highly skilled workforce, making them time-consuming and expensive. Spin Launch's electric-powered system seeks to overcome these challenges, enabling as many as a thousand launches annually and lowering the dependence on fuel, a major cost driver for conventional rockets. But of course, rockets are not only costly to build, requiring advanced materials and expertise, most are single-use, further inflating the expense of each mission. Spin Launch's approach could address these inefficiencies, offering a reusable, energy-efficient alternative. The reduced reliance on combustible fuels also has environmental benefits, shrinking the carbon footprint of space exploration while conserving resources for future missions. These advantages once earned Spin Launch widespread acclaim. In late 2021, the company was celebrated as one of the world's best employers in the space industry by Everything Space, a prominent recruitment platform. Spin Launch's innovative technology also garnered recognition from Time Magazine, which included the company in its top 100 most influential companies of 2022 list. By proposing a novel method of reaching orbit, Spin Launch captured the imagination of industry experts and organizations alike, dominating headlines with its bold vision for a more accessible and sustainable path to space exploration. Seven years after its founding, Spin Launch captured attention with the successful completion of its first test launch in October of 2021. The system, a massive centrifuge nearly 33 meters in diameter, was a scaled-down prototype of their ambitious orbital accelerator concept. Alongside a smaller 12-meter lab accelerator version, these tests were intended to demonstrate the feasibility of launching payloads into orbit using kinetic energy rather than traditional rockets. However, the results were underwhelming. The initial 10 test flights achieved a maximum altitude of 30,000 feet or 9,100 meters, on par with commercial jetliners. While these tests were primarily proof of concept, they raised doubts about the practicality of the approach. To fulfill its vision of reaching low Earth orbit, Spin Launch proposed scaling up its system dramatically. In September of 2022, the company secured $71 million in funding from investors to build a version three times larger than the suborbital accelerator model. 
This next generation system would stand up to 100 meters tall and spin payloads at launch velocities of 7,500 kilometers per hour, utilizing rotational speeds of 450 revolutions per minute. However, due to challenges including site selection and insufficient capital, the full-scale orbital accelerator has yet to be constructed. On paper, the proposed system seems impressive. It could carry payloads weighing up to 200 kilograms and launch them at a 35-degree angle into space. Yet, the physics of such a design introduces significant complications. A straightforward calculation reveals that payloads would experience forces exceeding 10,000 Gs during launch. To put that in perspective, humans can withstand only about 10 Gs for any extended period without serious harm. This extreme G-force isn't just a problem for human passengers. Payloads with delicate structures, such as solar panels or precision instruments, are also at risk. SpinLaunch has worked on solutions to address this issue. For instance, the company partnered with Portland State University to test a modified version of ORSAT, a cube satellite designed to survive these punishing conditions. While the modified satellite withstood 10,000 Gs, the unmodified version suffered catastrophic damage with its batteries crushed. This highlights a critical limitation of the system. Payloads must undergo costly and extensive modifications to endure the launch forces. In contrast, existing rockets such as SpaceX's Falcon 9 offer more straightforward and less restrictive alternatives for satellite deployment at only slightly higher costs. Beyond payload concerns, the spin launch system faces other engineering hurdles. The tether that spins payloads within the accelerator must endure enormous stress, especially as it approaches speeds near Mach 6. At such velocities, any structural weakness could lead to catastrophic failure. To counteract this, Spin Launch operates its accelerator within a vacuum chamber to eliminate air resistance and reduce stress on the tether. Additionally, the tether is constructed from reinforced carbon fiber plates, chosen for their exceptional strength and durability. Operating a machine of this scale also demands significant energy resources. According to CEO David Wren, the power required for a single launch is equivalent to the combined output of 100 Tesla Model S vehicles or between 70 to 150 megawatts. Despite this immense power consumption, the process is still expected to be cheaper than the cost of rocket fuel for a conventional launch. However, the question remains whether these savings justify the system's inherent limitations and complexity. The economics of spin launch's approach are another source of skepticism. While the cost savings from reduced fuel usage are appealing, the high expense of developing, maintaining, and operating the orbital accelerator could offset these benefits. Moreover, the limited range of payloads capable of surviving such launches diminishes the system's appeal to potential customers. Rockets like the Falcon 9 are versatile, reliable, and increasingly cost-effective, making them a preferred choice for most satellite operators. Despite these challenges, Spin Launch continues to push forward with its vision. The company's vacuum-protected high-speed tether system is a groundbreaking engineering effort, demonstrating impressive innovation in the pursuit of alternative launch technologies. However, the real question is whether Spin Launch can overcome the fundamental limitations of its design to become a viable competitor in the commercial space industry. As it stands, Spin Launch faces an uphill battle to achieve widespread adoption. The extreme G-forces limit the payload types it can carry, while the system's high energy requirements and engineering challenges add layers of complexity. For now, the company remains a niche player in a market dominated by proven, versatile rocket systems. Spin Launch's future depends on whether it can scale its technology while making it practical, affordable, and broadly applicable. A tall order in an industry that prioritizes reliability and cost efficiency above all else. Whether Spin Launch can overcome these obstacles and carve out a meaningful role in space exploration remains uncertain. While their concept is bold and innovative, the challenges they face highlight the complexity of rethinking how we reach space. For now, their progress will be watched closely by both enthusiasts and skeptics alike. Admittedly, when dealing with something spinning at such high speeds, the risks are significant, especially when considering the issue of vibration. If the weight of a spinning object isn't evenly distributed, it will inevitably cause vibrations. 
This principle is the same as how rumble feedback works in gaming controllers. A small electric motor with an uneven weight creates vibrations. However, in the case of something as massive as Spin Launch's tether, which spins several times per second, even the smallest imbalance can lead to catastrophic results. A slight misalignment could trigger vibrations powerful enough to destabilize and potentially collapse the entire structure. Imagine a windmill being destroyed by spinning too fast, only on a much, much larger scale. But if we set aside these risks, is all this enough to reach low Earth orbit? There is one more obstacle to consider, air resistance. As soon as the vehicle exits the vacuum chamber, it enters the atmosphere. While traveling through the air, the vehicle encounters a resistive force known as air drag. This force depends on several factors, including the vehicle's speed, the air's density, its shape, and the size of its frontal cross-sectional area. It's similar to the sensation of wind pushing against you on a roller coaster, except magnified exponentially. The faster the craft travels, the greater the drag force it experiences, which significantly impacts its speed and trajectory. Because of this drag, the craft will begin to slow down rapidly upon launch. If you were inside, the sudden impact with the atmosphere would likely unalive you. Not that it matters much. If you were actually aboard the spinning apparatus, you'd already be, um, a pancake from the extreme g-forces. The craft's speed would decrease substantially as it moves through the atmosphere, severely limiting its ability to achieve orbit. At this point, it seems highly unlikely that Spin Launch's system will work as promised, at least within Earth's atmosphere. Even Musk himself has expressed similar doubts. In a tweet, he stated, Earth's gravity is too high and atmosphere too dense for accelerators to be a good solution versus reusable boosters. However, in the same tweet, Musk also mentioned something intriguing. A linear accelerator for the moon. What do you think he means by that? But in case you didn't know, it turns out Spin Launch isn't the first to envision using catapult-like systems for reaching space. The idea appears in The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, a 1966 science fiction novel by Robert A. Heinlein. The book imagines a lunar colony's rebellion against Earth and explores libertarian ideals, but it's also notable for its depiction of a linear accelerator used to launch payloads into space. This device relies on electromagnetic propulsion, much like a railgun. Well, let me tell you, electromagnetic propulsion uses powerful magnetic fields to push and pull objects, allowing them to reach incredible speeds without traditional fuel. This technology has the potential to propel spacecraft at speeds much faster than conventional rockets, making space travel more efficient and less polluting. Still, it's a concept, and we're not really there yet. But hopefully, someday soon, within this lifetime, who knows? This concept bears a resemblance to Spin Launch's centrifugal system, with one key difference. Heinlein's linear accelerator is situated on the moon. Thanks to the moon's weak gravity and lack of atmosphere, resistance would be minimal, making such a system far more efficient. So what if Spin Launch applied this concept? What if, instead of enduring the drag and challenges of Earth's atmosphere, the system were to be moved to the moon and used as a cargo carrier between the moon and Earth? Without air resistance, this idea becomes far more feasible. Of course, transporting such a massive accelerator to the moon would be a monumental challenge. <laughs> However, with SpaceX's Starship, a vehicle capable of carrying up to 100 tons, set to become operational soon, the system could potentially be transported piece by piece. This modular approach would reduce the number of launches needed to assemble it on the lunar surface. The United States Space Force has also shown interest in Spin Launch's technology, suggesting there may be potential military applications for its suborbital accelerator. Whether for launching payloads into orbit or for other purposes, such interest could provide new avenues for the company to explore. While using Spin Launch's system for low Earth orbit launches remains a daunting challenge, abandoning the concept entirely would be a waste. 
Even if the company fails to achieve its original goals, the data and insights gained from years of development would undoubtedly contribute to the evolution of launch technology. If you can think of innovative ways to use this technology, whether for transportation, militaristic applications, or something else entirely, share your ideas in the comment section down below. As always, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you for tuning in, and until next time, keep looking up.